Let's show you the contrast between Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris today. Trump gave a disastrous speech in Greenville, North Carolina, low energy, and he told the crowd, we need to go back to 1798, he says. That's when he says America was great. He says he wants to bring us back to 1798. Let's play the clip. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 18, no, of 1798. Seven, think of that. 1798. That's when we had real politicians that said, we're not going to play games. We have to go back to 1798. Contrast that to Vice President Kamala Harris, who says that Donald Trump's own former generals say that he's a fascist. Play this clip. What is at stake in this election is so fundamental that it really does cross partisan lines. We are talking about whether you will have a president of the United States who takes seriously their duty and their oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And there is a clear distinction here, uh, which is that I will and he will not, as evidenced by many statements he has made, including his intention to be a dictator on day one, his intention to weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies. And then you just look at what the people who know him best and worked with him in the Oval Office in the White House have said about him, which is he is unfit to serve and would be dangerous if he were president again. And he even by the former um, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has been called a fascist to his core, I am quoting. So what we are talking with folks about today is what I've been talking with folks about since I've been on the campaign trail these last 70 odd days, which is this is a choice for the American people. And it is a choice between whether we're going to chart a new way forward that turns the page on the division, the hate, the chaos of Donald Trump, but also, and maybe even more fundamentally, do we have a president of the United States who stands behind the seal of the president of the United States, taking seriously their oath and their duty to uphold the Constitution of the United States and abide by the rule of law? And so I'm out here talking with folks to remind them of what's at stake. And I'm very pleased and honored that so many people are showing up to these events to have this conversation because I think they know, regardless of who they voted for in the last election and the party with which they're registered to vote, on some issues, we just have to all be Americans and put party aside. Back to Donald Trump in Greenville, North Carolina. Donald Trump says that Vice President Kamala Harris can't put two, sen two sentences together as Donald Trump struggles to get out his words. Play this clip. Something is clearly wrong with her. She can't put two sentences together. Here, Donald Trump continues to say that Vice President Kamala Harris is a cognitive mess as Donald Trump presents himself as a total cognitive wreck in Greenville, North Carolina. Let's play this clip. She's a mess. She's a cognitive mess and nobody wants to talk about it. And before Donald Trump took the stage, Donald Trump uh, held another PR stunt. This one was in North Carolina on or in an area that was devastated by Hurricane Helene. Donald Trump made this event about himself. He had Congressman member Chuck Edwards give him an award. And the award that Donald Trump was given while at this devastation zone was the French fry certification pin for being the best fry server at McDonald's. This is so sickening, folks. Watch this. Offered uh, because, you know, I also own McDonald's restaurants. I know that you perfected your skills behind the counter a day or so ago, and uh, it was my honor to present uh, President Trump with the uh, French fry certification pin. Uh, <laughs> so. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. God bless you. Really nice. right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. And by the way, the individual there, Representative Chuck Edwards, recently made news by putting out a statement debunking Donald Trump's hurricane lies that are actually killing people. Now, let me show you Vice President Kamala Harris uh, from earlier in the day as well, talking about how Donald Trump does not want to raise the minimum wage and how a new independent analysis has found that Donald Trump would cause Social Security to run out of money in six years. That means you will lose your Social Security because of Donald Trump. Play this clip. For example, that my opponent Donald Trump does not believe we should raise minimum wage. And I think everyone knows that the current federal minimum wage is $7.25 an hour, which means that the person who is working a full day and working full weeks will make $15,000 a year, which is essentially poverty wages. 
So there is a big difference between Donald Trump and me on a number of issues, including this, where I absolutely believe we must raise minimum wage and that hardworking Americans, whether they're working in McDonald's or anywhere else, should have at least the ability to be able to take care of their family and take care of themselves in a way that allows them to actually um, be able to sustain their needs. Uh, the other issue that has come up recently uh, has been the issue of what we are um, seeing again about Donald Trump just being frankly hostile to the whole notion and importance of Social Security. Uh, there are many seniors in our country that Social Security is their only form of income. And now an independent agency has reviewed Donald Trump's theory about Social Security and his policies and has indicated that his policy would actually render the Social Security fund um, empty, essentially, um, in six years. Again, if you look at it from minimum wage to Social Security, Donald Trump clearly does not understand the needs of working people with Social Security be, being rendered insolvent in six years. What that would mean for the seniors of America is catastrophic. You may assume that you're getting everything your body needs from your diet or a simple green juice, but I recently discovered that most people, including myself, are still short on essential nutrients our bodies need to function at our best. So I've been taking momentous creatine omega-3 and protein daily to ensure that all my bases are covered. These three supplements support nearly every aspect of my foundational health, from aiding my cognitive function to reducing inflammation in my muscles and joints, just to name a few. My momentous daily protocol has become a staple in my health routine and makes the perfect addition to the other wellness products that are part of my toolkit. Supplements can feel like dirty words, I know, and navigating the space can be daunting due to the lack of trust and transparency, but I've come to learn that I can trust Momentus, which makes the decision much easier. My trust is in Momentus because of their dedication to working with the best, from their collaboration with experts to their unparalleled commitment to only using the highest quality ingredients. They also heavily invest in third-party testing, holding their products to the standards set by the most demanding organizations in the world, including the NFL and the NBA, ensuring that what's on the label is what's in the product and absolutely nothing else. They call it the momentous standard, which is really the industry's leading standard in quality. There's a reason why the world's best athletes and experts use and help develop momentous products. So if you were like me and you want to take supplements that are made by and used by the best in the world, go to livemomentous.com and use the code MIDASTOUCH to get up to 30 36% off your first subscription order. And if you don't feel like subscribing, you can still use our code to get 20% off all of my favorite products. That's livemomentous.com with the code Midas Touch. One more time, it's L-I-V-E-M-O-M-E-N-T-O-U-S.com. Use the code Midas Touch. Back to Donald Trump's horrible speech in Greenville, North Carolina. Here, Donald Trump says that he is better than Abraham Lincoln. Play this clip. I'm the greatest president there's ever been. I said, what about George Washington? Now nah, you're better. What about Lincoln? What about Abraham Lincoln? Nope, you're better. They said, I'm tougher on the border than Abraham Lincoln, right? Than honest Abe. But you know, Donald Trump then brags about killing the bipartisan border deal. Remember, Donald Trump intentionally killed a bipartisan border deal so he can complain about the border. And here he is making fun of it and making jokes about it again, that he harmed legislation that would have helped you and we, the people, play this clip. And so they tightened it up a little bit. Oh, look, our numbers are a little bit better. Look, oh, Trump stopped the bill. He told the Senate. Ted, did I ever tell you not to sign that bill? No, right? I didn't tell anybody, to, but they liked that. Trump stopped. I sort of liked it. It gives you such power. You know, you come from Queens, and now I'm calling. You will not sign that bill, senators. You will not. They have me calling up. You will not sign that bill. Actually, I like that sort of. Maybe I should go along with that story, Ted. That's something. Nobody's had that kind of power in a long time, right? Going back to what Donald Trump did before he was in Greenville, North Carolina for the speech, Donald Trump was asked a question about FEMA workers getting attacked and assaulted and having their lives threatened. Donald Trump's response was, they deserve it. Play the clip. President, President Trump, yeah. Trump, 
A armed gunman was arrested and charged with making threats against FEMA workers two Saturdays ago. FEMA had a safety stand down because of continued uh, credible threats. Is it helping the recovery up in North Carolina to keep making these claims that FEMA's not doing their job? Well, I think you have to let people know how they're doing. If they were doing a great job, I think we should say that too, because I think they should be rewarded. But if they're not doing, does that mean that if they're doing a poor job, we're supposed to not say it. These people are entitled to say it. And these are honest people behind this. If FEMA were doing well, they would be saying they did a good job. They're not, for the most part, political people. For the most part, they're not political people. But uh, you've obviously seen nothing but, uh, you know, very bad statements coming out about the job that FEMA and this administration has done having to do with this area, North Carolina as a whole. And by the way, other states also, they're also complaining. But look, a lot of the money is gone. They don't have any money. They have to have they have to have a meeting in Washington, a special meeting in Washington to get money. It's all gone. They've spent it on illegal migrants. Many of them are murderers. Many of them are drug dealers. Many of them come out of mental institutions and insane asylums. And many of them are terrorists. And they spent money to bring these people into our country and they don't have money to take care of the people from North Carolina and other states. So, you know, I think you have to be able to speak. Does that mean let's not talk about it? Because by doing that, they'll do a better job the next time. It's very important. Yeah, one more question. How horrific can you get? And here Donald Trump continues to spread lies next to Chuck Edwards, the congressman from the area who debunked those lies, who's giving Donald Trump French fry certifications Seriously, America and Donald Trump continues to lie and say the FEMA money went to migrants, which is 100% false. And those types of lies are killing people. Play the clip. So that's the only thing I can say. And certainly uh, you have all heard the same stories that we all hear that FEMA has done a very poor job. Our FEMA, when we had a problem, we we did record uh, rescues. And we what the job that FEMA did under uh, the Trump administration was really incredible, but uh, they had spent, in all fairness to FEMA, they had spent hundreds of millions of dollars doing other things, things that I don't think uh, bear any relationship to this money. There was, they were not supposed to be spending the money on taking in illegal migrants, maybe so they could vote in the election, because that's a lot of people are saying that's why they're doing it. I don't know. I hope that's not why they're doing it. So uh, they really didn't have any money. They don't have very much money. And now they're saying, uh, can we have a special vote? Let's have a special session. Uh, I'm in favor of that, but somebody has to get back to why did they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on something that they were not supposed to be spending it on, okay? Back to Donald Trump's event in Greenville, North Carolina. Here, Donald Trump talks about weaving and how he loves to not make complete sentences, and he thinks it's beautiful, the weave, he says. Here, play this clip. Where the hell, they don't do that with anybody that I've ever heard. With me, they do the opposite. I give them a gorgeous, full-flowing, magnificent, beautiful answer. I call it the weave, right? All Always get right back to the right place, but you cover a lot of territory this way. But you give a beautiful answer, and then what they do is they take pieces of it out, and all of you say, what the hell happened to my beautiful answer? They do the opposite. And that's bad, too, but that's not like this. They took her into Donald Trump from this Greenville, North Carolina disaster of a speech says that he hates hydrogen because it'll make you blow up. And then your wife will say, where are you, honey? Were you blown up by hydrogen? Here, play this clip. The one thing I can't get used to is hydrogen. You know, you know the story with hydrogen. It's great until it blows up, in which case you're not recognizable. Even guys, strong guys like this. They'd call you mom or your wife. Is it a mom or a, oh, look at that. Oh, I know them. Very wealthy parents. That's nice, you know. I know them. No, your kids wouldn't be recognizable. That's not a good thought. Huh? How's my son doing? Uh, well, he tried the new hydrogen car. It didn't work out too well. So if they want to give me one for free, even if they have it fully developed, 
where they haven't seen a problem in a couple of months. I have no interest in it. But I mean, folks, we're watching someone literally disintegrate before our eyes. Call it what it is. He has dementia-like sim symptoms. This is the type of individual who looks like he has Alzheimer's, looks like he has dementia. I'm just giving you my opinion right now, but call it out. This is someone who is very unwell. And here he is again saying how brilliant he is. That's like the person who invented the paperclip. He's like the paperclip inventor. Here, play this clip. This is something they called me up from Wall Street, the most brilliant people. They called me up. How did, where do you think of that? Sounds simple, right? But it's not so simple. I always say it's like the paperclip, you know, some guy 129 years ago, he came up, he took a little piece of stuff and he went away. All of a sudden he has the paperclip. He made a fortune. People look at it. They say, why didn't I think of that? This is the same thing. Then he goes on to say that CBS and 60 Minutes should lose their license. It is, isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy what they do and the level of meanness, the way they write about people that they and the way they protect. How about 60 Minutes, the way they protected Kamala? She gave an answer. She gave an answer. Think of it. 60 Minutes CBS and they ought to lose their license and they ought to take it off the air. It's the biggest... Based on what? Why should they lose their license? Because you were too afraid to do an interview and Vice President Kamala Harris does actual tough interviews and you are too scared, you pathetic human. Here, play this clip. My opinion, six, you know, we'll see what happens. They're being, they're being sued. They're being sued by a lot of people. No, they should lose their license for that, right? You know, the fake news is protected. How dare he say that? Why would he ever say lose it? They took her answer, threw it out, and gave her a new answer, and they're trying to defend it. Uh, well, can you imagine if that happened with me? It would be over. The electric chair. And by the way, does anybody have any doubt that they worked with her campaign to get rid of that stupid answer? Donald Trump then says, CBS is getting sued by lots of people. Lots of people are suing him. Here, play this clip. And again, what is he even talking about here? It's supposed to be a campaign speech. So he goes to North Carolina to get an award for working the French fry machine in a McDonald's that was actually closed for the day um, where the uh, customers were actually his supporters in a staged PR stunt. And then when he was asked a basic question about the minimum wage, he refused to answer that question, by the way, at a McDonald's that was the site of protests for its working conditions. Are you kidding me? And by the way, all of the health hazards that were taking place that day. And here Donald Trump says that if God had his way, Donald Trump would be winning California if God was the one who counted the votes. Play this clip. I will protect our borders. You know, you've had politicians that didn't do it. They were either stupid, maybe dishonest, could have been dishonest. Hard to believe they would be dishonest, isn't it? When you see guys like Adam Shifty Schiff, he would never take anything. Can you believe this guy's probably going to be a senator? I can't even believe it. I'll tell you, I, went, I was in California. We have some of the biggest crowds you've ever seen. I was in California. I'd love to have God to come down and be the vote counter just for one day and see how well we're doing California. They send millions and millions of ballots out. They don't know what the hell's happening. And no matter what happens, they say, well, California is not available. I have a rally. I have 100,000 people. They have a rally. They have 200 people. And they say they're going to win. They're not going to win. No. Did you ever hear the explanation? Then Donald Trump goes on to talk about liberation. And he uses this term because he intends to send the military against American citizens. That is his plan. He will use the United States military to attack and kill and put people in concentration camps. How do we know that he's saying it? And I know corporate media is going to go, oh, he's just saying it, but he doesn't really mean it. He is saying it and he uses the terms, I'm going to liberate this country. We don't need liberation. We are a free country and these MAGAs are trying to take away your freedom and my freedom each and every day and our country's freedom. Here, play this clip. The United States is now an occupied country. But on November 5th, 2024, we will be a liberated country. We will be liberated like never before. It will be Liberation Day. Then Donald Trump talks about how much he loves a chart. And he previously said he loves to sleep with the chart and he loves to kiss and hug the chart. Play the clip. 
Oh, I love it. I love it. Then Donald Trump talks about his tariffs and the tariffs, which are actually a tax on imports, a tax on the American people that actually hit hardworking Americans most. And he goes, if you don't like my tariffs, you're either dumb or corrupt. Well, Donald Trump, you don't even know what a tariff is. You don't, you, when you put a tariff on China, you're taxing Americans, you idiot. Here, play this clip. It's the most beautiful word there is, tariff. And these stupid people, stupid politicians, they don't like, look. They're either dumb or they're corrupt. Anybody that opposes tariffs for a country where you're gonna, because China's been doing that for years, we don't want you. And then let me show you just a longer clip of Donald Trump again talking about how he wants America to look like 1798 and how he wants to invoke the Alien Enemies Act, which shuts down the media if you criticize Donald Trump, that's what the Alien Enemies Act says, and round up people and put them in camps. That's what, go read what the Alien Enemies Act is. Play the clip. And to expedite removals of Trend Day, Aragua, and other savage gangs like MS-13, equally violent, I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 18, no, of 1798. Seven, think of that. 1798. That's when we had real politicians that said, we're not going to play games. We have to go back to 1798. To target and dis- and while all of this is going on, the economy in the United States is the envy of the world. Our stock market is booming. Even Fox has to admit it. Maria Bartiromo, one of the biggest propaganda mouthpieces for Donald Trump, has to admit it. Play this clip. And going into this week, we've got a market that is strong. Take a look. Uh, since last year, the Dow Industrials are up 15 percent year to date in 2024. Uh, S&P is up 23 percent and the Nasdaq is up better than 23 percent. The Wall Street Journal. We're just going to present the facts each and every day here at the Midas Touch Network. Work. That is a sickly, unwell, despicable human being on the stage. Judge for yourself. That's what I see. I don't know what you see. Form your own opinions. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 4 million subscribers. Make sure you early vote if you can. Okay. Share your stories below about early voting too. Thanks. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.